So a very warm welcome to uh, Senator Dr. Zarkar Sourvardi, who's joining us from uh, Pakistan on a video link. So thank you very much, uh, Senator Dr. Zarkar Sourvardi, to this program. And we are talking about the election 2024, and the entire program mm -hmm. is basically focused on whether election 2024 are happening or not, especially from your personal and from the PTI point of view. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think there's um, there's a great pressure on the current Pakistan government. I mean, it's an interim government, but you know we have an interim Punjab government, which has which was supposed to be there for 90 days by the uh, constitution of Pakistan. But we don't see that currently the Punjab government is not only unconstitutional; it's an unlawful government because it has um, it has gone beyond its. Um, 90 days mandate and it is continuing to function which is um, totally unlawful unconstitutional but um, um, the, a lot of things are happening right now which are uh, against the constitution of this country and are not um, are against you know the lawful practices but it's it's a matter of it's the law of the jungle right now However, there is a lot of pressure to hold um, independent, fair, and just elections. Uh, and how long can uh, the establishment or the interim government delay this? I mean, they tried using the um, uh, census game. They tried using the, we don't have enough money. Um, we, we don't have the security cover and every, every hat, every trick they could get out of their hat, they were up with it. But eventually they, they will have to hold because the IMF bailout that uh, has been their um, uh, main uh, source of uh, income to uh, return the uh, debts has, uh, is, is uh, conditional to the elections. And so they will have to go for the elections. But uh, I, I feel that with the, with the way things are turning, with the way things are unfolding, that uh, elections seem to be the backup plan. The plan that they would like to go ahead with is to continue with this chosen, selected government. And then even with the elections, the kind of things that are going on, I mean, Mr. Nawaz Sharif came in, um, less than a week ago on the 21st and within three days there was a Gallup poll saying he's 60 percent uh, you know his popularity is 60 percent which was unbelievable with the kind of um, response that the public gave to Mr. Shabazz Sharif a week earlier when he was out in his own constituency in Lahore the constituency of Kana and um, there uh, the people on the street pelted them with stones, they kicked his car. They um, they were uh, uh, shouting slogans at them, and it was it was a ruckus over there. And then, of course, that didn't leak out to the press. The press didn't air that, but we saw uh, the videos on um, WhatsApp, on YouTube, and apparently, 94 of those people are in prison. I mean, this is also a fact that has not been uh, declared to the public. But the kind of things that are going on, the kind of um, extrajudicial uh, uh, torture that's going on, the kind of missing people are picked up uh, with no um, uh, no warrant. They're, uh, they're, the FIA is working in a completely lawless manner, but you can't call them out because um, they're the judge, jury, and the um, everything. So you really are left with um, and. We are getting, I mean, every other week I get a call from someone or the other to not do this, not do that. So there's a lot of pressure going on here to keep people quiet. Then there are offers to switch sides. We get calls from uh, uh, people who are in IPP. They want to contact us. We avoid them. And then, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a really strange, these are really strange times. And... Um, we are just surviving. Yeah, I mean, Pakistan is a land of uh, paradox, mm -hmm. contraindication, and defiance, and flouting of law and constitution we've all seen. But lately, what's been happening is, of course, unheard of. And it appears the PTI is on the, on the wrong end mm -hmm. of the stick this time, which People's Party, MQM, and probably 
PMLN also went uh, the, the decibel of this uh, rather inhumane treatment to a number of political activists uh, has really, really escalated and increased tremendously. Have you thought that this entire scenario will dissuade your voters to come to the elections if they at all happen? No, I think the voter turnout will be there. We have more than um, 20 million new voters and um, they are going to come. They are going to come and they will vote. And uh, you will see, uh, these are the people who've just turned 18 in the last six years, five years, and um, th there's going to be a, hu a huge turnout. People will be there, and that's what, um, because currently the um, uh, people who are in power, they want to bring Mr. Nawaz Sharif uh, uh, and, his, uh, and, the, and, and a number of other selected people to power. I mean, that's what it appears. And um, so there's, um, people are not happy with that because uh, we saw in the last 16 months, Mr. Shabazz Sharif was in government, the PDM was there. This was a combination of um, People's Party. This was a combination of uh, PML uh, Nawaz and JUIF, as well as many other small parties, the, uh, the Mangal Party from Balochistan, the National Party and ANP. So all of them, they've been ruling in the last 16 months and they have brought a country which was at 6% growth rate when uh, uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan was there. And within um, uh, uh, 16 months, they've brought the economy down and uh, they've, um, you know, our growth rate has gone to less than um, zero. It's gone in the minus. We've, um, our dollar shot up to more than 300, which thankfully now the, um, the army chief has been very good. He's, um, exerted his pressure and he's um, reduced the rate of the dollar which was being, um, you know, there were very illegal activities which were going on in the foreign exchange business. And so at least that that is the kind of stability that people are looking for. But it is uh, without a, a democratic government, how long will that last? We've got um, with the kind of, um, uh, you know, we had, uh, Imran Khan had pushed up large scale manufacturing. He had pushed, um, uh, in, given incentives to the IT sector. We, the tourism, tourism was really booming. Um, all of these things and people had health cards and there were so many and the price of electricity was what, 16 or 18 rupees. And now it is it has crossed 50. The price of gas has gone six times. The price for um, uh, flour, atta has gone up uh, three times. Sugar. So for the poor man, oil, um, edible oil has uh, crossed um, uh, seven, eight hundred rupees a kilo. Um, and of course, uh, the cost of fuel has also gone up more than double. So it's really expensive for people to live now. And these are just the basics. All the other costs of living from education to clothing to um, uh, rents and it, it skyrocketed. So where are the common people of Pakistan, not the elites? How are they going to make two ends meet? And what is the plan? There seems to be no plan which will work. And um, I personally feel that Pakistan needs to have a 20 year plan and we need to uh, we need to execute that uh, and there has to be there has to be buy in there has to be buy in from everyone but you can't go against the wishes of the people they will speak up one day or the other and they will they may not be able to um, exert themselves directly but in various ways they are expressing their opinions and eventually you will have to uh, listen to what they are saying you rightly stated the inflation and the price hike which has not only skyrocketed but actually it has really impacted on pakistani people and the prosperity and 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 you have gone you have given a good comparison to the performance of your your government to or since the ouster of yours government and starting the new government under the PDM. Do you think you'll be able to influence the public and the general people and uh, draw a comparison in the next election? And how, would, how will you be able to convince them? 
convince who? I'm sorry, I missed Con that. Convince the general public, uh, the, the parallel that you have drawn, your performance, because that probably is going to be one of the biggest factors in the, in the voting. But I don't think there's a lot of convincing to be done. Uh, people are convinced. People know. Uh, so it's it's obvious. It's uh, as obvious as night and day. The uh, problems they've had to go through. The uh, you know the. Um, it, so I don't think it's a problem of convincing people. The issue right now is whether PTI will be allowed to um, uh, stand for the elections with the bat as our uh, symbol and whether uh, prime minister ex prime minister imran khan will be allowed to be there uh, which probably he won't be allowed but i mean those are the questions that we need to ask whether most of our candidates will will uh, will uh, put in their nominations as independent or will they take the bat as their symbol and um, how will they be allowed to uh, go uh, participate in the election. I think those are the questions. Convincing the population is not relevant to members who are identified as uh, PTI, who've been loyal to the party. Those uh, members of the party who have left and joined other parties are facing the music in their constituencies. They are facing the music when they are out in public because they have lost whatever respect they had. We even don't want to talk to them. I mean, I come across the um, uh, colleagues who were in the polit in the provincial assembly, in the national assembly. And they have, um, they don't have. A, nobody wants to talk to them. Nobody wants to speak to them. They're always giving justifications when you see them. They're trying to become cozy with us. We don't want to have anything to do with them because it's. They have really, you know. I mean, every everyone had. Um, some problems, which is why they uh, change sides. But I mean, I mean, we sympathize and empathize with the people have been through a lot, are still going through a lot, and so um, so it's can't really say much. But they've lost their respect, and I don't. I think their political careers are gone. Yeah, I think the main main point here will be whether PTI is given a platform or or freedom. To express themselves, I know there's been a lot of persecution, and you personally were persecuted by the new setup, and 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 especially your chairman Imran Khan has been persecuted to the extreme. The the telltale signs are that it's highly unlikely that they Imran, that the establishment will allow Imran Khan to contest the election, and if that happens, do you think PTI is going to buy court the election, or would you still uh, go ahead with the second tier uh, leadership? I think that is something for the party to decide and um, I won't be able to answer that. We will just have to wait for things to unfold as time passes and there's not a lot of time to go. So we will, uh, we've just got to know that uh, 28th January has been uh, declared as the date for election. Let us see how, that, how things unfold. Although people have started campaigning, we have uh, know that in KP, Mr. Rathit Khan has uh, got the permission from the uh, uh, district administration to go ahead with his uh, jalsa and rally. So people are doing their campaigning. Let us see how, how the events unfold. So so this was Senator Dr. Zarika Sarwardi, uh, one of the fiery uh, debater of uh, Pakistan Tariq and Saf in the Senate and in the political arena who gave us gave us her candid thoughts. Um, we thank you to all of our guests today who gave their valuable opinion on the election 2024. Although the election had been announced uh, probably 28th of January 2024, but there is still a lot of mist, a lot of uh, gray areas there and a lot of persecution for one party, PTI, uh, whose uh, government under the premiership of Imran Khan was ousted, roughly coming to about two years. So Pakistan is still in doldrums, and I hope that things improve and the prestige and respect of the Pakistan establishment, army in particular, and Pakistan itself is restored by a fair and free elections. 
Until then, we say thank you very much for watching Qs.News, my program on election 2024. I'm Dr. Sohail Qureshi and I say goodbye from our London studios. Thank you.